It's about half past uh, eight just now. Kim and I got to the hospital for about half six. We've been here for two two hours, and uh, she's in the um, like constant monitoring area. Uh, so we didn't get to go into the baby the nice ward or wherever it is, uh, just because the baby wasn't moving that much. Heart rate was all fine, Kim was all fine, stress levels were low, Kim was dealing with the pain amazingly, um, but uh, baby wasn't really moving too much, so she was asked to drink a lot of ice cold water, Kim was then a little bit sick, uh, but uh, she, Kim, being slightly paranoid, likes to have a good bit of uh, 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 care of herself, so, she, so she's in the uh, constant care unit place. Um, but she's uh, just on gas and air, and uh, totally, totally rocking it just now. Just uh, contractions happening pretty much every two minutes just now, and uh, and she's just she's like, oh, I'm totally wasted on the on the on the gas and air. I'm like, oh, I want to go, but she's got a cold sore, so I can't use the the gas and air at the same time because it'd be great for me. So I'm actually on the medicine ball quite a lot while Kim is uh, is just on the gas and air. But uh, it seems to be everything's going absolutely fine. Um, just uh, the one of the women said that it might be uh, born tonight, so before midnight. So it's half eight now, half nine, half ten, half eleven, maybe the next three hours. So, super excited! One thing that may sound a little bit strange is the idea that we get to take this little person home afterwards. Uh, there is a real kind of like, oh, we're doing something, we're creating something so super delicate and so super precious, and then after a day or so, we just take it out of there, shove it in a car seat and drive off home and have to deal with it ourselves. There's a kind of like, oh, like for me I'm always like, you buy stuff, you use it, you break it, you upgrade it. But this, I haven't bought it and I can't really use it, but I can break it and I can't upgrade it. So it's like, oh, what do I do? I've got to be like super careful with it. So it's, uh, it's, a, it's a whole new experience that I'm kind of dealing with just now. Um, but uh, it's nice, it's nice just now, it's cool. Can't wait, can't wait. So here, I've got, on his birthday, little Logan Stephen Danger Bauer, <laughs> who was born at one minute past three on, on his due date, the 4th of September. And he's just about to go, he hasn't even been weighed yet, so we don't know how heavy he is. <laughs> but he's come out, he's tried to have a feed, a feed, and now he's just having a chill out time with his daddy. So he's like, yeah, chill out time. Oh, yeah. Awesome. Now, to me, my voice is like the opposite of helium, because uh, like it's really low. Whenever you take gas and air in the hospital, it's so good. Oh my god! Right? Yeah, I feel like I'm like Anchorman. I like I, I right. I really need to find out if I'm actually speaking slower, or if that's actually just how it is. <coughs> Okay, we've got a problem with little, little Stephen Danger Bauer here. Logan, sorry. Logan Stephen Danger Bauer is that you are now my biggest focus of attention. So all my videos now are going to be all about you. So the whole Dom, <coughs> Dom Talks channel is going to be Dom Talks about you and like how cool you are and like, oh, you've learnt what your thumb is. Oh, there's your hand. What does it taste of? Oh, I can yawn. That's amazing. I I have wriggly, uncontrollable feelings. I, I totally get that. Yes. Ah, oh, uncontrollable. Ah, oh, nightmare. Oh, you found your nipple. What is that? It's amazing. Right, so, yeah. Yes, it's going to be very difficult for lots of you all the time. Fun. So, just uh, chilling uh, back in the car just now because there's... No place for a husband to be in the antenatal or postnatal ward, or wherever it was. Uh, and also, I so badly need to sleep because uh, obviously that was all throughout the night. Uh, Kim finally gave birth at three in the morning, one minute past three. Um, and then obviously we're both like, "Oh my god, look at this thing! It's a mini us." Uh, so obviously no sleeping right after that. Um, and uh, so I was lying on the floor uh, after that and uh, Kim was trying to breastfeed and uh, then I was giving the baby some cuddles and the cuddles was like, uh, I'm so up for sleeping. So he was behaving very, very well. 
he was he was in uh, uh, being pushed for quite a while, and uh, it was getting to the point where the doctor came in and said, "Right, you've been pushing for quite a while, and he's not out. We're gonna have to go and get serious about this and maybe do some extra stuff." And uh, after that, he's like, "No, hold on a minute, I'm coming out here," and came without any. Uh, she didn't even take gas and air uh, because she took it at the start and she's like, oh, I feel ill and was throwing up. So she she took no no painkillers at all and just like rocked it. Um, they gave some local anaesthetic to the area for doing some cutty bits. But oh, oh and I was down at the, the business end. I was always like, I would never want to be at the business end. And it's gruesome. It really is quite horrific. Uh, but when it's your baby coming out, you're like, I want to see this, I want to see this. So that was quite cool. Um, but then afterwards, I was in total like, oh, adrenaline and a bit of gas and air for me uh, that I didn't feel anything. So afterwards, after we'd been in that ward where we had the kid, we were there for about uh, another two hours until about five or six. And then um, then we moved into kind of a postnatal ward, uh, which is just around the corner. However, I was trying to carry the bags and... There was a little bit of a delay where we had to wait for a minute, literally, uh, outside the room. I had to lie on the ground, uh, or go on all fours on the ground. Meanwhile, Kim is standing there uh, with, with the baby in a, like a trolley kind of thing. Uh, and she's having to make excuses for, yeah, my husband's got a very bad back. And they're like, you just gave birth though. And I'm like, yeah, sorry about that. I, I'm the wimp here. Yeah, I, I totally lost. Um, so Kim's rocking it just now. Uh, but... Because I've obviously got to drive home and I've got the baby seat in the car and all that kind of stuff, I'm going to need to, I'm just trying to get a bit of sleep, uh, calm down my sore back so I can drive home safely uh, as possible. Because we reckon, uh, probably just later on today, um, it's 10 o'clock just now, I reckon we'll be back by just after lunchtime, maybe 2, 2 o'clock or so, around about then. Um, but uh, Kim seems good and the baby's looking happy. Um, and... Uh, yeah, fun, fun night for a first ever experience of a, a child delivery as well. Because that was the last in my family. So I never kind of got experience of like, oh, what's, what's the baby? Or, or what's the mummy dealing with, with all the pains and all that kind of stuff. So it was a real kind of eye opener uh, for me. So that's, that was good fun. And he's the first in Kim's family of the next generation. Um, and uh, so he's going to get lots of little cousins and uncles and aunties and cousins and nieces and nephews I, I have no idea what they all are but uh in the future so he's going to be the oldest one on kim's side but he's the youngest one on my side because my sisters uh, and brothers have all got uh, their kids which are all like two and upwards now so he's the youngest on my side oldest on kim's side so he's right in the middle awesome so yes can't wait to take him home uh well and then there that's me actually leaving at 10 o'clock at night and as you'll notice uh, with nobody else in the car. So what's happened is we're leaving Kim in the hospital overnight, not for any uh, unsavoury reasons or anything like that, but just because there's actually a whole load of good things of staying over uh, your first night. There's uh, breastfeeding, not as simple as you'd imagine. You'd normally think, baby, breast, jobs are done, you know, uh, jobs are good, but uh, it's, it seems like baby's got a little bit of learning to do. Um, as as does just getting the right position and knowing when they're actually going for it and then thinking, was that long enough? I don't know. Don't need to do more. All that kind of stuff. Uh, well, not me, but for uh, for certainly first time mums uh, and first time babies, I guess. I guess they're having to figure out what's going on here. Um, and uh, so being in the hospital, Kim's getting some good uh, midwives just helping her out and shoving the baby's head where it needs to be and there's also other tests like there's a hearing test and then there's a uh there's another thing uh like they just check that all the vitamins that it's got uh, when it came out because i got a vitamin k injection or something um it was all good so uh and also help with the first nappy or two uh it was quite good so uh, as again i'm going home tonight uh, by myself kim's gonna be in there by herself I get my final night of uh, of un uninterrupted sleep for a long, long time, uh, possibly. So, uh, so I'm going to try and relish this once I get home. Um, but oh, shattered, that's for sure. Um, but uh, so awesome! Like the little danger bower is uh, sleeping very well, as in like 
onto my chest, doing lots of skin to skin, so with my top off, and he's like lying on my chest, uh, and uh, and he's just like zonk, I'm so asleep. So he's uh, he's enjoying nap times, and I'm totally enjoying nap times with him as well. So that's uh, that's kind of cool, especially uh, that last one I had was a good half hour. And I was properly asleep, and then I woke up, and his arm was just like, "Oh, hello!" Goes up to my face, and it was very cute. Um, and uh, I was just like, "Oh yeah, cool!" It's just so nuts. Like you don't need a license, you don't have to pay for these things, and you just get to take them home after producing it. Ah, scariness. So that's the thing. Staying in for the hospital one night, just. Extra kind of security, just making sure that the baby's okay, that it's feeding okay, that it gets extra... Because I, I think if we didn't do the hearing test, we'd have to go to a clinic somewhere later on the week. What a faff. So we can just do that now. Um, and uh, But no, everything's good. So uh, I'm, I'm just going to be keen to get home, go to bed, catch up on my sleep, and then head straight back uh, to the hospital tomorrow morning and, and get them home and uh, show the baby his new house. Uh, but he likes he likes being blowed on. If I give him a little, if he's like, Rah! and just go, and uh, and he chills out with that. So maybe it's just really hot in the in the hospital, um, and uh, he does feel nuclearly hot, uh, and he just can't imagine that he's getting quite enough nutrition or calories from the tiny amount of uh, colostrum that uh, the mum makes. Um, you know how that is able to power the nuclear furnace that is this little baby which if you annoy or put him in the wrong position all hell breaks loose for about 40 seconds of going Rah! and you're like wow that's full body workout you're putting there um, so uh, yeah I'm surprised he's not kind of going, I, well he is getting fed pretty much every two hours, every hour two hours uh, or so and uh, and doing good so yeah can't, can't wait to bring them home and so that's First night with the little, uh, what's his name? What's his name? Logan Stephen Danger Bauer.